Hi everyone, I thought I'd do another update on my tank as quite a few things have changed since the last one. I've got new equipment, a um, couple of new fish, got some new coral as well. So I'll just run through a few things that I've done, a few changes that I've made, um, how things are progressing as well. Things have been going really well lately. You would have seen the um, Flame Angel last time. There were the two Amphias, I had the Gobi and also the Cardinal. I had a couple of um, coral in there as well, so I've got a few more since then. All going really well. Uh, a few days ago, I noticed some couple of little white specks on the head of the Flame Angel. I was a little bit worried about him, so I was asking a few questions about it. I was only noticed it over the course of an hour, one evening, and it uh, it looked like white spot to me, which I was really worried about, seeing as though it is a brand new tank. Turned out it isn't white spot though, and it went literally that evening. Woke up the next day, it was all gone. Um, it might just have been either some stress spots. I was told it could have been a couple of grains of sand that had stuck to the um, the lining on his outside. It could have been a couple of microscopic air bubbles. Whatever it was, it went straight away. So yeah, not too concerned about that now. I did buy a medication at the time after speaking to a couple of people. I bought the polyp. It was the Polyp Lab medic stuff. I was told that that's pretty good. It doesn't cure, it doesn't cure white spot or anything, but it's a good thing to add to the water, and it does help with the parasites, etc. Haven't used it yet because it all went. So I'm just going to monitor things and see how it goes. I did get a couple of new fish uh, yesterday, which are my two little clowns. The other one, oh, he's down there. Oh yeah, the tiny little ones. I put the guards on my fans actually, just in case, because I see someone had a puff of fish yesterday. They got sucked into their propellers and uh, he didn't make it, unfortunately. And I was just laying there last night thinking, they're tiny little fish, what if they did get sucked in? So yeah, I've just put them on for the time being until they get a little bit bigger. So yeah, they're, uh, they're doing good at the moment. I also bought myself, you can't really see it very well there, but there's a little Halloween hermit crab. Um, it's standing on his back at the minute, cleaning his, cleaning his show off. So yeah, that's a good little addition. Also got myself a feather duster. I've poked him underneath a bit of rock, which he seems pretty happy there. I had um, a piece of Zoa last time. Um, I had to take that back about two weeks ago now because it developed like a mucus on the Zoa itself. Uh, it turns out that there was a clam buried right deep inside the zoa and it was causing a problem with the zoas. I'm not really 100% sure what it was, but I ended up dipping the zoas, etc. Quite a few different things fell off. Nudibranchs were one of them. So once they'd fallen off, I put it back in the tank, but still it wasn't coming back. So I took it back to my shop, local shop. They've got it and they've got it back to how it was, albeit they had to take quite a little bit of it away because it, it, it was just unrepairable sort of thing. So they took it away. So. I've got this one now, and I also got one, another one yesterday, which was almost identical to the first one. And that looks really healthy. I did dip them. I was told always dip the zoas because they're such a close knit coral. Uh, there's lots of things that can hide inside them. So yeah, I bought some dip solution, which I made sure I'd done that yesterday as well. Um, coral dip by NT Labs. It's not the strongest one out there. It was all I could find at the time though but it seems to have done the job. Quite a few things fell off of this new one yesterday. So hopefully that's not gonna have any problems. Straight away though, it's looking really, really healthy. Whereas this one, they, they were closed for a long time. They ended up coming out after a week or so. They were closed up for quite a while, but then started opening. So yeah, the majority of the time now, most of them are open. So they look nice as well. The leather coral at the back there, normally that's, that almost fills that space to be fair. Um, but for the last week and a half now, it's actually been, I've been told it's been shedding. So I've actually tried to help it along. I pulled it up towards the top of the water tank. I started brushing it gently with my finger and I could see all of this like mucus lining coming off of it. So I was just doing it gently just to try and help it along. So hopefully within the next couple of days now that might start opening up properly again. But yeah, it doesn't seem like there's anything wrong with it. Just shedding its skin. So I've been told. Um, so that's another new coral I've got, that's a tracky. Um I've got a nice piece of chalice, that was actually resting on the sand yesterday but I popped a couple of bits of rock underneath it just to lift it off the sand because I was told that it's not, not ideal for it to be laying in the sand, some parts of it can, can start to die out or get bleached etc. So yeah I took that up 
Uh, this one's got its polyps out at the minute. That one's looking nice and healthy, doing quite well. I've got a few little little pieces at the top. Some of them are Stylopora, Acropora. Um, I've got some Montipora that I've used epoxy on, put it into the rock, wedged it in there, and then put some a new little piece of rock over the top of it. So that's holding on there nicely. When that starts to grow, that'll look good. My hammer in the middle, I uh, used some epoxy on that, placed a little bit of rock around it, so I've hide all the epoxy that I used. Yeah, that seems to be doing really well, likes the flow there. I had my candy cane down low at first in the sand. I've actually moved that up a little bit higher after I was told to. That seems to be doing well. Um, I do have a little barnacle um, inside one of those heads there. He comes out there. He filter feeds now and again out of there. That's quite cool to see. I've been told that he's harmless, so I'm going to leave it in there. Um, what else? My star polyps, they're looking really healthy. Quite a few new heads growing on the rock itself. So yeah, that all looks good. I'm really happy with everything. You can see my conch now hoovering up there, doing really well. So yeah, I'm pleased with the layout so far. Everything seems to be going really well and looking healthy. Um, the, the filter feeder, I've shown you them already. Um, what else can I say about that? That seems to be it for the time being on the new fish and coral. The way I've been feeding them, I've been using uh, frozen shrimp. The fish seem to prefer this at the moment, or most of the fish seem to prefer this at the moment, over the flake food or the pellets. I have been trying to introduce a couple of these pellets and crushing up some of the flake as well. Just trying to wean them off just pure frozen food, trying to give them a little bit of variety. So uh, yeah, hopefully they start getting used to that. Feeding them two to three times a day at the moment. Really difficult because I'm not sure if I'm feeding them enough or not. Um, time will tell really. They don't seem to be doing too bad at the moment. So I'm just going to carry on for the time being what I'm doing. Parameter wise, my nitrates, nitrites, ammonia, um, phosphate, the pH, it's all looking really good. I had, um, all of it was really low to be honest, the nitrates and ammonia. Um, ammonia's always been on zero really for the last two weeks now. My pH level, pretty much always a constant to be fair, that doesn't really change. Monitor it every day on the apex, that seems to be absolutely fine. My phosphates have been zero all the time basically, I've never had them over that so far. Um, I have been dosing Nopox with the Mature Kit and once I finish that I bought some extra Nopox as well. And I do dose that every single day. Um, I had someone mention about my algae light reactor that the Cheeto inside it wouldn't be working very well, wouldn't be growing because I'm dosing the Nopox and that is correct, yeah. Um, I, put the, I put the algae light reactor on at first and I just had my phosphate reactor running. I'm not actually running the phosphate reactor at the moment because I'm using the Nopox, you can't run the two together. So yes, it is hindering the growth of the Cheeto but the Cheeto is still growing albeit very slowly, it is still growing. And when I look inside there, there are quite a few, I don't think you'll be able to see it, but there are quite a few organisms living in there. I'm not sure whether they're copepods, amphipods, or what parasites they are, but there are things growing in there. It doesn't seem to be dying off, so it's doing all right at the moment. I'm doing about five mil a day at the moment of no pox, and it seems to be keeping the algae down. Um, yeah, my nitrates were at around 20. They're now down to, what are they down to? My nitrates, they've gone down. They were at over 20. Now they're down to two at the moment. So yeah, they've been doing quite well. Nitrites, still got a little bit of nitrite, but I was told that nitrite in a marine tank isn't as bad as what, peop what most people think. It's not as bad as a freshwater aquarium to have slightly a little bit of nitrites. I found a good explanation of this online. Uh, yeah, pH and salinity, they're all good now. Thankfully, I worked out what I was doing wrong with the refractometer. So yeah, salinity stayed a constant. Temperature, some people are saying I'm running it slightly too high. It's always between 26.5 and 27.3. Um, my local fish store, they run it at 27, up to 27.5, and it's thriving. So I'm just keeping that at the moment. My alkalinity, always been quite high. That's due to the rock, the real reef rock, apparently. So when I was doing my reef mature kit, I never dosed the Coraline Pro. I've got a full bottle of that still. 
um, haven't had to dose it. So yeah, regarding my alkalinity, I have actually been using a Hannah checker to get the results for that. It's a really good little system to be fair. I much prefer to use that rather than the Red Sea kit. Um, just a little bit more accurate if you ask me. So yeah, I like that and I will be getting a calcium one soon uh, because I've been using the um, test kit from Salifert for the calcium. It doesn't seem to be as accurate as I would like it to be. So at the moment, they're not too bad, those two parameters for calcium and magnesium. As soon as they start to drop with the alkalinity too low, then I have actually bought myself dosing containers and I've also got my dosing pump up there. It's a new Bubble Magus one. Heard that there was a couple of issues with the computer system on the old Bubble Magus. But yeah, I've got the newer version, so hopefully won't have any issues there. I've got the tubes running down into the containers, so it sucks it up through the pump system and then goes down, and that'll go into the first chamber in the sump. So it's got a little bit more flow in there. I'm actually thinking of getting some uh, marine pure balls to go in there as well. They've got a really big surface area for beneficial bacteria, etc., to grow. So I'm looking at getting those, and I'm probably going to put the balls in that first chamber. I think that'll work quite well. Um, I've got myself a reef link because I got with, rid of the wave pumps, the Neptune Apex wave starter kit. I just couldn't get on with them. They were a little bit too powerful. Although I have got the two of the MP40s, they are still really powerful and I do run them on a low speed, but I must say they are much more controllable at a low speed over the Apex ones. I just felt when I, when I turned the Neptune ones down, they weren't very controllable at a low speed. So I've mounted both of the controllers up there. They're working really well, really happy with them. So yeah, it's all looking good at the moment. Um, I've started to use my RODI machine, uh, my filter. Only just used it once so far. It was running slightly high TDS at the time. Um, when I first started it, I think it was about 21. Um, went down to about 13, 12 or 13 by the time I finished filling up a full tub. Um, so hopefully when I use it tomorrow, uh, before I do my water change, it should be a little bit better on the TDS reading. It's a four stage filter, so hopefully I'll get a bit of reading this time. I am actually gonna start mixing up my own salt, um, salt water rather than keep going to the LFS all the time. I'd rather mix up my own. I'm gonna use the Red Sea Coral Pro Salt. I've got a large bucket already ready to go. So yeah, I'm gonna mix up some RODI water tomorrow, put in the salt, get the right salinity, um, and yeah, that'll be my 25% water change. I've been told I can, um, 25%, sorry, I mean 25 litre water change, so that's 10%. Um, I've been told 5% was enough for the time being, but I'd rather just do 10%, make sure I keep everything all in check. Um, I've got calcium, magnesium and alkalinity ready for when I need to start using those. Um, I spoke briefly about the feeding. I'm actually just starting to use this now to feed my coral. Um, it's in the fridge at the moment. Once they're open, you're supposed to keep it in the fridge. So yeah, just putting equal parts of that in. I'm gonna do it every other day for the time being until I am told otherwise, really. But yeah, I'm just gonna try that. I bought a nice little gadget. Well, flipper magnet, they're brilliant. I'd advise anyone to get them. Really is much, much quicker and easier than putting your arm in the tank every week to try and clean the algae off the grass. The glass, it works really well. I got this, pretty hard to get hold of. Innative Marine, it's a defroster. Put your food in the top pop it in the tank using the magnet and yeah it allows the frozen food to defrost and then it just gradually lets it go into the water and it just makes that sure that everyone gets an even amount of food nice and slowly doesn't dissolve too quickly sort of thing like and yeah I prefer that rather than squirting it in with a pipette it seems like a good way to do it um, anything else I can talk about I was only going to keep this one relatively short with it being Christmas period and New Year and stuff. I'm not feeling great myself. I've had a big cheese night last night and yeah, guts feel a little bit bad at the moment. So I won't keep it too long. Another little close up of the tank. Everything seems to be going to plan so far. I do want to get three tangs 
they're going to be my last three fish now. I'm looking at getting a yellow tang, um, a purple tang, because you don't see many of them, and also a lipstick tang. I'm going to wait until I come back from skiing. I'm going skiing in a couple of weeks, for a week, so my other half's going to look after the tank for me while I'm away. So I'll get those fish probably at the beginning of February, let everything settle for a little while, make sure it's all running well. Put those in, I've been told to put all three in at the same time as well because of them being territorial um, and a even num uh, an odd number rather than an even number as well. So yeah, didn't want to go for one, so yeah, I chose three. So they'll be going in. Um, yeah, I think that sums everything up really. Any questions you've got, please ask. But yeah, so far so good. Oh, actually, before I go, last thing was I changed my... I've put in mead, uh, filter cups. I used them, uh, there's a couple of Sainsbury's pots in there. Uh, Tupperware, I drilled some holes in the bottom of the Tupperware and I just fill it with floss daily rather than using the socks because every time I pulled the socks out of the drawers I seem to have a load of crap going everywhere inside the tank. So yeah, that needs changing now, but I'm gonna do it tomorrow when I do my water change. They slide in and out nice and easily. And I just change the floss every two to three days really at the moment. A couple of times it's needed doing a little bit sooner than that, but it was probably because I put too much floss in there and the water flow was restricted a little bit. But yeah, if you don't put too much in there, the filter cups work really well. I do recommend changing your socks over to the cups. So much easier so much easier but yeah that's it for now i'll let you all go thanks very much for watching any questions you've got or any advice you've got please feel free to leave a comment in the box and subscribe if you want to see another video thanks very much bye bye